On the breakfast, 18,940 suspected drug traffickers arrested in the last 20 months, comprising 17,444 males, 1,496 females, including 21 barons between 2021, January 2021 and July 2022. This is according to the statistics from the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, Nigeria's Drug Enforcement Agency. Now we'll look at the details of this and of course the problem of drug trafficking in Nigeria. Also on the breakfast, the launch of the special agro-industrial processing zone program can banish food insecurity in Nigeria in less than a decade. We'll be talking about uh, how this can happen as we proceed. And of course, we have a daily look at what the papers are saying this morning and it comes with a great deal of analysis right here on The Breakfast. And we're back with the Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's a beautiful, beautiful uh, Wednesday morning. We're reaching you live from the studios uh, of Plus TV Africa right here on Victoria Island. And I can confirm uh, we have no flooding on VI this morning. We have a flood watch. You should please a camera well, somewhere. But that, was a, that was a flash flood <laughs> yesterday. Yeah, well, it, it's, it's a normal thing we've been having before. You know, maybe we should place a webcam outside, you know, just monitor and give updates uh, per, per hour. My name is Kofi Bartels. And I am Messi Ebopo. It's good to have you join us this morning. All right, all right. And talking about uh, the flooding, yeah, another thing that is affecting quite a lot of people right here in Lagos. It happens to be a small matter of... Um, uh, 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 a few cues, you know, they've popped up again, mercy. <laughs> and of course, I'm sure you're way to work. The traffic was a bit more. Uh, it certainly was because on my way to work, I have at least on one particular street, at least uh, five to six uh, filling stations. So you have to look at the map and then you have to try to navigate to see uh, how to, <laughs> to overtake, overcome uh, the, the, the traffic jam. But yes, indeed, a few cues have resurfaced in Lagos and it's got people talking. Um, it's got people talking. Maybe later we'll look at what Ipman uh, has been saying. You know, but there is a, uh, a current suspicion that is connected or related to uh, fuel scarcity. You know, sometimes there is no scarcity. We'll just go uh, form a cube, you know, out of panic. Uh, but this is not panic buying. Uh, it seems the fuel is not running as much as it should run. Uh, finding sure that many filling stations in the city, uh, the mega city of Lagos, are uh, currently experiencing long queues, like we said. Um, you know, it, I think this started, the view is that it started on Monday, on Monday, and uh, the indication is that the situation might get worse anytime soon. So, I mean, if you have your, your jerry cans, go stock up, and uh, but you have to do it safely, all right? Don't go and keep it in your house, or you can put it in a generating set, put it in your car, and all that. Uh, one of the, the, the news outlets sent their reporter to town, uh, Plus TV also are sending a reporter to town. But on because this is a trending segment, we want to take what people are saying. Okay? Um, I think Daily Trust sent a reporter to town. And their reporter went to uh, Bova's filling station along FRC VIO uh, Road, Ogunusi, near Lagos Ibarra Expressway. They also observed the same on Ogunusi Road, outward Lagos. This is really far. Uh, the NMPC filling station near Omole, Phase 1 Gate. It is also... Uh, reported had a long queue there, almost extended to Latif Jaconde Road. For those who know Lagos, that's a long queue. The situation is not different, we're told, in uh, Ikeja at the mobile filling station, Agidengli. Uh, while many filling stations are along Ikorudu Road, uh, that's quite a long road, Lagos Abekosa Expressway, we're not even even dispensing fuel at all. That's it. That is, as we say, in this part of the world, uh, in no day not even dispensing fuel at all. So it's um, a very, very worrying trend, and people uh, have been commenting on this. But um, I think the comments and the attention has led to questions being thrown away of the Independent Petroleum Marketers Association of Nigeria. And this is what they say. Um, they are saying that the increase um, uh, in the queues is, is related to uh, some aspect of flooding, flooding right here. Um, that has affected access of, of their, their tankers to, uh, to, to the petrol stations in Lagos. 
All right. So apart from that, you know, the queues are also bringing about an increase in the pump price of uh, the product. And Ipman is coming out to say that they are not in support uh, of this situation. They're blaming it on the hike, price hike regime by private depot operators. All right. So the depot operators, operators are the guys who store the petrol. Um, so the Independent, Independent Petroleum Marketers Association of Nigeria, they've said that they, they're not in support of the hike. They're not the ones behind the hike, but it comes from the private depot operators. All right. And um, some more reports, for instance, uh, the Sun sent a report out to, uh, um, I think this is uh, Bulegba. All right. It's a part of Lagos Station. There's a total filling station at New Okoba in Abulegba. And uh, they said that what they saw was that they were dispensing uh, petrol uh, in the early hours of yesterday. But motorists, especially those who bought into Jerichans, had to part with an additional mercy, 1,000 naira. An additional 1,000 naira. They also sent their reporters to Ogba. Ogba is, I think, in the greater Ikeja area. Uh, and they also said that majority of the filling stations in Ogwa were not dispensing fuel at all. Now, they spoke to a marketer at their Papa uh, depot, uh, Mr. Kim Ambali. They quoted him uh, saying that uh, the petrol shortages was first observed last week, Wednesday, all right, but worsened at the weekend. Now, we in other parts of Lagos uh, experienced it from, from Monday. Some would say even uh, uh, from 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 Sunday. Now, according to that man at the depot, this is what the son quotes him as saying, that he says that there's been a drop in supply from the NNPC Limited, that's the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, which is the importer of last resort. So that supply has gone down. And of course, it's come with an attendant price hike from the ex depot price of 148.17 naira per liter to 178 naira per liter. Now, that, of course, will spill down to the end buyer, the final buyer of the product at the retail center, what we call uh, the petrol stations. All right. So um, that's, that's what we're hearing. We'll need to get some more details to really find out if it's true that the, uh, the flooding is really, really, uh, truly uh, behind it. Some are saying, of course, there's a U.S. dollar regime, you know, an issue behind the scenes. Mercy, over to you. Well, well, I think that it is a time where we need to carry out a lot of investigation because we know that usually, for instance, we're experiencing a flood, uh, a disaster in Nigeria. Whether or not there's been an emergency being declared, it's important that uh, we pay attention to it. But I feel like it's also within our culture, like our practice and behavior, for people to take advantage of any circumstance you know, just to profit, and, and, and that is what it is. Because if you look at, you know, the hike in the prices of goods and services most times, it doesn't follow the natural laws of economy or economics <laughs> that you were being taught. Uh, and at some point you begin to ask yourself, if all of this, like in Nigeria now, you could really say that we're experiencing hyperinflation it's overboard. Do we have agencies to regulate? So it, I, I feel like this is part of our, you know, mm, default mm, settings. Mm. But I, I, we take advantage yes. of the situation, but not to make uh, nonsense of, mm. you know, other factors that could be responsible for the scarcity. Absolutely. We understand our inability to meet up with quota production. We understand yeah. everything that's going on, revenue, revenue uh, issues and what have you. We also understand, I mean, these are issues that you cannot ignore. But we also understand that, yes, we're going through a situation and at, at some point when we had a flooding, because, you know, it, you, you have Lukoja, it, it, it divides. Yes, There's a navigation it between this su part. Supply yes. and Buja. Exactly. And and but, so but, so, but, so but, that, can be a, that yeah. can be a major concern. I, I, th I think you've said, you've hit the nail on the head, Mercy, that you've said that we need to do a lot of investigation. Finally, truly the floods are affecting it. But what, what we can say f for sure um, is that there's been an uh, accusation or an allegation from the Independent Petroleum Marketers Association of Nigeria that the private depot owners are the ones who are who've increased the price, the ex depot price, and they, the Ipman members are not going to lift the product as much as they used to. You know, they're staying away, and that has caused uh, scarcity. It's just causing queues, because if people could, you know, buy from maybe 20 petrol stations, they can now buy from maybe 10, you know, 
in those 10, everybody not is not going to go there and cross the queue, you know, maybe five. So the, 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 the private depot operators need to tell us what exactly is going on. Um, one of them, like you said, on the Papa Tank uh, farm guy, imitated by the sun, said an NPC, which is the importer of last resort, was not uh, delivering the products. So they have to tell us why. But if they're not delivering the products, does that mean you, you increase it? What's going on? You know? Exactly. So, yeah. so, so I, I will thank Ipma for telling us the, the, what, maybe the truth. Or, or, you know, at least we would li like to know if it's the truth, but this means that they are not lifting the product like they so, should. So I also say that um, there's always that human element, like I rightly mentioned. Uh, there's always a human factor. There's always, I don't want to say a Nigerian factor, because it might be encompassing. It cuts across. So it's a, it's a default setting for human beings. We, we tend to be um, self-seeking our interest and what have you and so at the slightest opportunity we want to profit you know I, I hope I hope this is sorted out as quickly as possible some driver was telling me uh, a cab guy uh, I think a day or two ago that ah, it's December or they want to <laughs> they want to do their normal thing uh, they want to return with their scarcity so they can make their money and all that but we'll, we'll keep monitoring the situation right here on plus TV Africa well, well quick, quickly let's move on to the next stop trending and this is quite interesting because it talks about the university and uh, the students returning to the classroom shortly after the strike was called eight months exactly eight months and so uh, a picture made it to the internet yesterday surfaced and I read the comments I saw a lot of people excited some students made a lot of comments hey can I transfer from a certain university to another university because of what was seen so uh, a university lecturer was reportedly to be gifting students who attended his uh, first uh, class with a hundred dollars following the suspension of the strike and so there was a Twitter handle uh, there's a tweet that I actually made it Okay, so we had a tweet the, the, that shared on Twitter. The user was identified as Peter underscore pen 10, who disclosed that the lecturer gave out of uh, the note to 10 lucky students. So $100 to 10 lucky students. The picture made the rounds online, captured that student holding the note while in the office of the lecturer, identified as Dr. BC. And so the tweet said, Omo, one lecturer for arts in University of Ibado gave 10 students who attended his first class uh, $100 each. And that's what it is. So that then the comments started. But however, uh, what's interesting is that there's been a disclaimer to that. And so BC also tweeted, uh, saying my attention has been drawn to a, Twitter, a tweet circulating that I gave uh, $100 each to 10 students. This is not in any way true please kindly disregard thank you <laughs> so i'm just wondering those who, who went on to say oh i'd like to be part of this coffee interesting and uh, i think it's important we had to be pointed out that uh, the man uh, debunked that uh, that allegation or that rumor um that he had been sharing and dishing out in a hundred dollar bills i mean I, I, without so having been on strike i'm sure he'll be a person of interest you know, um, <laughs> to maybe EFCC or some agency to know, okay, how is he able to, because I mean, lecturers are uh, even crying for transport money, you know, to go back to school. No, all lecturers. You know, oh, really? Mm -hmm. Well, Asu, I mean, Asu has said it, you know, so the ones who are not crying for transport money, I'm sure they still need their money. Um, uh -huh. So, you know, <laughs> if he's sharing that, maybe he should also maybe tell, he would have had to tell, you know, the other lecturers how. The, the, the secret, you know, shows road, like you say, in this kind of. But I think since he's debunked it, um, uh, that's that. But if authorities would like to investigate, it's not bad. Because uh, debunking it alone is not enough. Uh, you have to call the person who alleged and the one who denied, and you sit them down, and you get to the bottom of it. Uh, but if a lecturer shares a $100 bill to the students, Maybe he's trying to make life easier for them. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, um, Mercy, let's move on quickly to a uh, last top trending st uh, story. Someone is claiming uh, on, on Twitter, which still doesn't allow us to edit our tweets. Uh, they need to do that quickly. If you're listening <laughs> to Twitter, please, please, please. All right. Uh, yeah. This is very important. Yes. Um, that he's claiming real Ola Uda uh, claim that um, commercial buses um, were set to go on strike on the 31st of October 2022, um, it says, please guide your movement to avoid being stranded or robbed by area boys. This is a, 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 a good advice. If this um, news or rumor of uh, uh, 
an expected strike by commercial drivers is anything to go by. Remember, they had complained after the uh, counterparts in Alaba, you know, in, um, in terms of I'm talking about their fellow businessmen, you know, uh, complained about the, the activities of area boys and Agueru, who extort them illegally. The bus drivers also found their voice and said, hey, we're tired of paying in all sorts of amounts to agrarians and roads. You know, we pay local government levies and stuff already. Why should we be paying these amounts of money? So um, this gentleman has given solid advice, you know. If there's a strike, know that area boys, uh, agrarians, or robbers rather, sorry, will want to use that as an opportunity, occasion to rob. So please be careful. It says, Transport Union, seven-day strike looms in Lagos. You know, with an exclamation sign, like a prophet of doom. But indeed, let's go to the news sources. It is, um, it's true. You know, he saw the news and put it out. It's true that uh, uh, Lagos drivers under the age, ages of a joint drivers welfare association of Nigeria. You know, nature was vacuum messy. Uh, they have threatened to boycott the roads from October 31, 2022, just a few days from now, uh, over alleged extortion by motor parks and garages management. This was what they said uh, uh, sometime last week. And they issued a statement, you know, uh, calling for seven days of mass protests and a total boycott. Uh, and they are seeking an end to what they described as uh, excessive extortion and the harassment of drivers at various bus stops, uh, the garages and parks in Lagos as well. And they're asking the government to intervene. You know, they're talking about places like uh, Badagri Mao too. They're talking about places like Seme Ojigbo. Uh, Ikordu, Ikeja, agri bus stops in other places. They pay as much as 50,000 or 5,000 naira. In some places, they pay as much as 7,100 naira. You know, if you know how much this guy pays, pay messy, you do the calculation, you know, you'll be, uh, you'll be astonished as to how much, you know, Lagos State makes from transport levies every single day. So, I... Uh, uh if the boycott is anything to go by, I mean, if it's really true, then it's going to be a lot on those who are uh, moving from one destination to another. Now, we also, you can talk about, if, if you look at the spirit where there's strike, I beg your pardon, no strike, but... Uh, season, a, season, season of strikes, yeah. <laughs> well, mm -hmm. season of strike. Uh, you could also look at uh, the issue of uh, fell, the queues and the fact that those who patronize public transportation have no access because a lot of persons are queuing to get petrol for the vehicle and so the road is almost not there. It would be uh, very, very dangerous for those who would want to commute from one point to another point. I feel like for every time you have a comment being made, whether or not it's true, whether or not uh, it's false, there should be an investigation. No one should take anything lightly. We should just be on top of our games. Our guard should always be up as a people, as a country. Uh, every other time there's a report, just let, let the guards be up. Let's investigate, let's find out. Relevant authorities, uh, quarters, everyone, all hands should be on deck. That's what it is, right? Uh, but it will just be you know, a lot if that happens. And if you talk about extortion, I, I witness that. I see that every other time. I don't know, but it might just be very genuine, but you know, every other time you have people paying so much, do this person's even factor the current reality of the country? I mean, do you even think about what we're going through at, at the time? The issue of inflation. Uh, because if you're already taxing or you're collecting from this person, there's a lot of taxation or extortion from this uh, vehicle, this person's who are drivers, this person who are into uh, commercial uh, business, right? If you're extorting from them, do you, you know what that means? It would actually trickle down. The implication is that the fare would actually be on the high and that would be on the people. So it's an extortion that's not just to, you know, those who are transporting, but you're extorting the Nigerian people. And the question would be, have we also been able to factor what the current reality is? So with the fact that we're experiencing inflation, double-digit inflation, and some would say it's hyperinflation, does the currently, I mean, the salary structures meet with the current reality of the people? That's what you should know. So for those who are standing on the road and then you're extorting, whether it's the government structure or it's illegal, so we have the Agba rules and what have you, you need to understand at the end of the day that you're extorting the people, the people. I think that we can do mm. better.
Yes, right? yes, indeed, we, Mercy. We, we, we can we can do better. You know, reason I started by saying nature buzz vacuum uh, is that um, the the NURTW would have been the the avenue to represent the interests of uh, the drivers, the commercial uh, um, transportation workers. You know, um, the the union has been, you know, has lost its focus. They become a tool of oppression, suppression, and uh, uh, should I say repression? <laughs> you know, an extortion of the drivers. You know, when if you go to the history of the NURTW, it, they were formed years ago when different union drivers unions in the country were put together by the government of Nigeria back in the day. So let's have something, you know, national that we can always reach out to you and uh, something, you know, uh, structured. Um, but now we see that it's they become a, a body used by politicians, you know, to win elections, used by politicians to steal ballot boxes and to chase people away. They become groups that are run by thugs and associated with people who are into several dangerous gangs that we call cults, cult groups in Nigeria. Um, and the, the drivers, the people who do the work themselves, can't even have a say. The people who do the work themselves are not represented. What, what about the welfare of drivers? What are the things that affect them? You know. So these people have turned on the drivers, and drivers now have said, okay, fine, who is going to um, represent us? And they have come up with their own body called the Drivers Joint Drivers Welfare Association so they can look into their welfare. And I think it's good on the drivers to take the, the desk in their hands and uh, say, you know what, enough is enough. You don't represent us anymore. Um, and we, this is what we want. You know, if, if ASU can go on strike, I'm sure the drivers can go on strike and say, we no agree. So it's interesting to see. I think we will, we will suffer a bit, but people will suffer a bit, but it's something that needs to be done because these people have complained for far too long. We have to go and, uh, of course, we'll take a short break. When we return, we'll be looking at what the papers have to say this morning with analysis uh, from our guest. Please stay with us. <laughs>